And still on our children, and this is bigger picture stuff which needs to be highlighted again and again, when are we going to leave children's books alone? From Little House on the Prairie to Dr Zeus, bedtime reading for kids is rapidly becoming a battlefield with classic stories slapped with trigger warnings for harmful content or popular authors such as Enid Blight and even cancelled. And waiting on the shelves of your local bookshop is a whole raft of woke literature for children waiting to replace them. They range from feminist fairy tales to tomes on teaching young children or young people about white privilege and subverting gender roles. Now, in the UK, Waterstones, which is a leading bookstore there, is currently displaying books such as How to Be a Better White Person, Gender Swapped Fairy Tales, and alternative bedtime stories such as The Tale of a Gingerbread Man Refugee. True story. In Gender Swapped Fairy Tales, the longtime favourite Cinderella, well, she's been replaced by the woke version the Little Glass Slipper, in which an old queen leers over a young prince, like some sort of royal cougar. The poetry book, What Are Little Girls Made Of?, is a reworked series of classic nursery rhymes created through a feminist lens. In Georgie Porgy, he doesn't dare make the girls cry. Oh, no. In Little Bo Peep, the protagonist wades through slime to rescue her flock. While in Humpty Dumpty, the egg is saved by a female doctor. You can't make this stuff up, but they have. If you don't believe that our classic children's literature is being massacred by work minorities for the good of their latest political campaign, you're not paying attention to this. The examples are now infinite. The twisting of wonderful stories is beyond disgraceful. And education authorities, well, they're too woke within their own ranks to pull this stuff up, and it doesn't matter where you go. The reason these stories have lasted for centuries is that they're just damn good stories. Yes, they emanated in older, less enlightened times, but that's what makes them so interesting and historic. You cancel this culture and you cancel our kids' ability to understand history and understand where we've come. Now, children themselves, they can't protest or object to this kind of contamination of our classics because they're being manipulated within this twisted classroom vortex. We have to stand up for them again and again and say, back off, leave the classics alone. They are classics for a very good reason.